Can you guess what this is? The hull of some great wooden ship? A full-scale model of Noah's Ark? No, this is the flowing cedar clad bowl of the velodrome, the race cycling track designed by Hopkins Architects for the 2012 London Olympics. As lean, spare and as well engineered as the lightweight machines that will fly around its banked circuit next summer, this is contemporary architecture responding elegantly and unpretentiously to a highly specific purpose and with subtlety, promising to heighten the excitement of races taking place under its swooping, single-span roof. The Velodrome is also one of the six shortlisted contenders for the Royal Institute of British Architects annual Sterling Prize. The Velodrome is currently the bookie's favourite to win, but you never know. This London school, the Evelyn Grace Academy Brixton, is special too. It's the first major building in Britain by Zaha Hadid. In fact, all the concrete Zs you can spot in its zigzagging concrete structure seem to spell out Z for Zaha. And that's fine, for many of the children attending this new academy know who their architect is and how she and her team have pulled out the stops to shape a generous and memorable school on a cramped inner city site. Architecture by itself can't improve exam results, but it can lift the spirit and raise the ambition of pupils and teachers alike. New museums and art galleries are often over-ambitious today. They're building shouting, look at me, when what you might want to be looking quietly at are paintings instead. In Essen, Germany, David Chipperfield has designed a serene extension to the city's Folkwang Museum. Inspired in part by the great modern German architect Ludwig Mies van der Rohe, it is a confident building, recycled glass walls, enclosing a sequence of internal courtyards that, beautifully lit, puts art first and the architecture that serves it second. When you leave Essen, though, the building remains fixed in the mind's eye. This is Angeleras, a cultural centre devoted to the Irish language, tucked unprepossessingly into a rattle bag of a Derry streetscape. Unexpectedly and ingeniously, the architects, O'Donnell and Twomey, have created a kind of contemporary take on a multi-layered medieval town inside, with ever-changing levels, winding, jarring stairs, criss-cross views, and a sense of tautly compressed drama. Stern and lyrical at one and the same time, here architectural prose and poetry are skillfully edited together. Speculative offices let by the square foot can be the most prosaic of all new buildings. Yet look around this one in London, the Angel Building Islington. It's a bold remodelling by Alford Hall Monaghan Morris of a 1980s office block, and with its public atrium complete with cafe and generous interior spaces, it feels more like a custom-designed and well-heeled corporate headquarters rather than so many acres of lessable space. Here, architecture has helped make the ordinary that bit special. And here's Bennett's associates rebuilding of the Royal Shakespeare Theatre at Stratford-upon-Avon, a building with as many layers, plots and subplots as the plays performed on its new globe-like auditorium. This is architecture as renovation, archaeology, rags and patches worked into a convincing whole. Complete with a tall viewing tower, it has the feel, in the best possible way, of a stage-set Italian town, a kind of Verona upon Avon. It suits Shakespeare to a theatrically hissed tea. I can't help being attracted to the velodrome. It's a building that's all of a piece, and as thoughtful and as well-crafted as it's exciting, and a building that everyone should find thrilling.